Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we've got a late night insight video on a limited edition Centauri perfume called Shambo. So this is the sample that Peter Carter very kindly sent me. You can see the color of the juice and uh, it comes in this nice little pouch and it comes in this uh, inside of the pouch. There is a picture of the bottle which says, there's the bottle. And it says that reality is beyond speech and thought. Only that which can be expressed in words is being said. But what cannot be put into language is indeed that which is. So that's the little quote. There's the, uh, you can see it's 100% natural perfume, which is very hard to do, by the way. 100% uh, natural fragrances are extremely hard to pull off. And um, there's probably five, six, seven different types of oud in here. I'll highlight the main ones that Peter Carter ended up using. Um, but he did send me this. He also, you can, if you've been watching and sort of following along with my channel, he sent me this because he said it was the very last sample of Shambo that he had saved for himself. And whenever he sent me the new Elixir, which I have a video on, so if you're interested in sort of exploring the house of uh, Centauri, there's still some more samples that I've been sitting on that I've been waiting to do videos on. But uh, this is what the new uh, Elixir, the 2023 release from the House of Centauri, uh, looks like. If you want to sort of uh, learn a little bit more about it, go check out my video on Elixir. Um, probably one of the coolest caps in the game, I will tell you that. Um, Peter Carter designed these himself, and this is heavy. If you threw this at somebody, you could probably knock them out. Um, so yes, if you want to sort of hear my thoughts on Elixir, I do have a video on it. But... That's basically how I procured Shambao, Shambo, because um, whenever he sent me Elixir, he also sent me the decant of Shambo. And I've now given it three wears, not full wears, but I've worn it to bed. So every time I've sort of picked up the first three, four, five hours, then I go to sleep. Um, but, I've, but I've worn it enough times that I really think I understand the fragrance. And, you know, I want to do videos on even these very hard to find perfumes. There may be a bottle floating around in the future that's for sale on eBay Someone's going to be looking it up, and hopefully they can sort of find my uh, my video on it. And what's interesting to me is um, Brandon from Therapeutic Fragrances did a video on Shambo, but he did like a you know like a hype video before it actually came out. So he said, "Oh, I'm so excited to have Shambo coming out," uh, but it was like before the fragrance was even launched. It was just like, "Hey, this is going to be released." So really, the only two fragrance videos on YouTube about Shambo are both from Peter Carter. There's no other reviews on it. So I don't know if I could call this an exclusive YouTube review, but um, there's really no other reviews on Shambo. Now there's only 97 bottles that were made. So there's only 97 bottles and they almost instantly sold out because even though this is not a collab with Ensar Oud, he's using oils from Ensar Oud and Ensar actually allowed him to use his name on the bottle. I think maybe there's like an Ensar stamp on the bottle or something. I don't know. But his name is on the plaque is what it ended up being. Um, and and so it's not a collab, but he's using oils from the House of Ensar. So let's read sort of the uh, little blurb from the uh, archive of the Centauri website, and then I'll sort of give you my thoughts. So it says, Oud is misunderstood by many at just how many different profiles and expressions there are to the sense it can create, which that's very true, by the way. If you've watched some of my interviews with Russian Adam, uh, you know that he's come out and said, oud can smell like anything. It can smell like, you know, what people expect it to smell like, this fermented, dirty, animalic sort of woody note, but it can also smell like vanilla ice cream. It can smell like florals. It can smell like honey. It can smell like any sort of note that you can think of. Um, and in this fragrance, it says that there's a smell of deep, earthy petrichor, which I absolutely agree with, and light, fruity floral tones and honey notes, which come from these different types of ouds that uh, Peter Carter ended up using in Shambo. And um, it says these are beautifully complete perfumes within themselves, multi-layered and nuanced as only nature can create, which naturally quieten the mind and give a meditative experience to the wearer. I wanted to work with these incredible oils to create a contemplative inner experience so that when we apply the perfume, we can close our eyes and stop the race of the addiction to thoughts. 
letting the natural quality of Oud guide us to a peaceful state. The word Shambo means the auspicious one. This is meant to provoke an inner contemplation of the universal mystery, asking the question, who am I? Oud is produced by the Ocularia tree as medicine to heal from infection, an elixir of life created through the will to live in the face of death. I think that is one of the coolest things about Oud, for sure. When we quiet, when we quieten the, our minds and open our lotus hearts, we too heal from within. Our natural innate quality beyond our conditioned thinking mind is love. A deep connection to everyone and everything where there is no separation of duality. When we dive deep through in, enough into our own hearts, we rediscover the great light within us, which is love. Okay. So that's a little blurb from the um, from the Centauri website. So I've got about a uh, three and a half hour dry down right here. And again, this is the third time I've worn it. You can see I put a pretty good dent in this uh, little sample that he sent me. And so so interestingly enough, um, like I said, Shambo means the auspicious one. And um, Peter describes uh, sort of the idea of this fragrance. It's almost like this zen-like meditative perfume. That's the whole point, right? So it's supposed to be a meditative perfume to sort of help you find yourself, your true self, and sort of reach this higher plane of consciousness, right? Um, very interesting sort of take on a perfume, and oud is the perfect note for that because there is something very contemplative, meditative. It's literally like you just sort of stop sometimes when you smell a proper oud, you just sort of stop and just take a deep breath, you know, just sort of Calm down, breathe in, breathe out kind of thing. That's I love wearing ouds to bed. Believe it or not, even though some ouds can be challenging to many people, I've come to really find oud to, to be exactly what he said as a sort of contemplative fragrance that really lets you look inwards and think about things. It's great to sort of stimulate the mind, right? And so what's interesting is I call Shambo, I call Shambo a oud and fragrance because you know how there's some fragrances that are just out and out oud fragrances right just an oud fragrance right oud is the star of the show this there's a lot of different ouds that he used from ensar but they're all sort of multifaceted ouds and they don't steal the show so this is a perfume with oud as peter described it not an oud centric fragrance even though there's a lot of oud as ingredients in the fragrance i think um the perfume itself is still allowed to sort of, the composition is still allowed to shine, if that makes sense. So it's an oud and fragrance because you can clearly smell it's an oud perfume when you smell it. But you can smell everything else inside of the fragrance as well. So you also get, it's well blended enough where you can smell the little details. So it's like you get the oud and you get the details. You get the oud, and it's not just like a foghorn of oud that just sort of, um, you know, blasts and drowns everything out. Doesn't This is not that type of fragrance. There's there's these ridges and details at every single turn. Now, doesn't mean that everyone will like where the, the ridges and details are going, because this fragrance, I think, when, when, I think when this first came out and it was sort of launched by Centauri Perfumes, my thought is that, you know, when people heard about there being six or seven different types of oud from Ensar in there, they expected something like this. Like, you know, a true out and out oud, just a oud bomb, right? This is uh, The History of Indian Oud by uh, Arise Le Doré, one of my favorites from the entire collection of The History of Oud. But this is just a true out and out Indian uh, fermented oud, the traditional funky oud that you would expect, right? And I think there were a lot of people who either didn't have very much experience with oud or they've never smelled real oud. Maybe they've only smelled like some of the oud compounds, you know, black, black oud or norlimbinol and, you know, these creations that these uh, houses build of synthetic accords nowadays. So they never really smelled real oud. They didn't realize that not all oud smells like Indian or Cambodian or, you know, Thailand oud or, you know, all these different types of ouds have different profiles. But many people expect um, that specific traditional profile of oud to be universal. And that's not the case. Oud has lots of different, um, you know, paths that it can take. It can smell like anything. All kinds of things oud can smell like. And so in here, uh, 
remember, it's a composition, and, and the composition is really allowed to shine. Peter um, didn't, uh, didn't use, even though he used large quantities of oud, I think the ouds that he chose uh, never drowned out the rest of the composition. It's actually, you know, if I could own um, any Centauri fragrance, this would be pretty high on the list, although I probably never will because it's so limited and the people that have it are probably going to want an arm and a leg for it. But uh, this is probably one of my, uh, even though it's not my favorite type of oud fragrance because I have the Russian Adam illness, if you will, the sickness where you always want more animalics and more uh, oud and more musk and more ambergris, all that stuff, right? And this is a pretty well-balanced composition. I'm still really enjoying getting to know it. So basically the ouds, the, the three main ouds that he used in here, there's an aged Maroki oud from 2006, and that's the one that gives off this sort of aged petrichor-like feel. So imagine Narciso Rodriguez for him, the, the eau de toilette with that uh, gray sort of uh, nail polish looking bottle, right? And imagine sort of... Um, Imagine rain falling on concrete, right? And that first sort of smell. Um, not not like the mitiatar where you get the rain that falls on, you know, dirt and clay. But imagine rain falling on concrete in the city. That's sort of more of the feeling of, of how this particular aged Maroki oud. It's a wild oud, actually. There's two wild ouds that are used in this composition. And um, this Maroki oud, the... Lang Lao Ling from 2006 is basically what it was called, um, is one of them. And so it has this very deep and soily and earthy smell. And you can pick that up. Um, that's, a, that's a very prominent note, that, that petrichor-like note. And then there's a, there's a uh, Midori Chi, and Midori Chi is another uh, one of the wild ouds that were used from 2005, this one was. And it's a Borneo oud. And um, it's, it's the one that gives off this very thick, sort of uh, syrupy, honeyed, resinous quality to the fragrance. Yeah, there's this very thick sort of, uh, there's a denseness to this composition. And I think the Midori Chi has, has, uh, plays a part, you know, in, in that sort of, um, uh, just imagine trying to pour out honey and it's just so thick it barely sort of comes out. That's the consistency of the perfume. And then there's Oud Yusuf, which that's sort of the lighter, more fruity, floral touches um, that you'll find. As far as Oud goes, that's one of the lighter, fruitier, floral type Ouds. And uh, then there's also three or four other types of Oud, which I think he used in smaller amounts. Uh, Zaza Zen from Thailand, Namasoma from Thailand and Cambodia, Bhutan Blue from Cambodia, and then Aroha Kiatu from Thailand. I don't know anything about those. Um... But um, the main three are the two wild ouds, the um, Maroki oud, and then the um, um, sort of honeyed-like uh, Borneo oud, and then finally the oud Yusuf. So the main floral composition, the main floral note that is sort of um, the star of the floral heart, if you will, is Lotus. And you know, you in the little uh, blurb that I read, he mentioned as we quieten our minds and open our lotus hearts, right? And um, lotus is there in large amounts. It's the largest floral that's used. And then in trace amounts, there's a little bit of, I think he said Bulgarian Rose Absolute and Jasmine Sambach, but um, really Pink Lotus Absolute, I think is the star of the floral show. Um, and, and lotus is the star of the show because it's supposed to represent something that's very important to the composition of this creation. And it's supposed to represent the love that we um, each have in our own hearts, if you will. And, and lotus sort of represents this purity. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a flower that is very important to many different cultures, but it's basically a flower that's supposed to represent the ability to overcome whatever challenges you face in life, whatever you know, mental or physical or whatever challenges life throws at you, um, you know, it's, it's supposed to allow us to open our hearts and overcome those challenges. That's the symbol of the lotus flower. And um, also this rebirth, uh, because lotuses have this, you have to remember, lotuses have, um, imagine how far down in some of those lakes and ponds that the uh, lotus stems have to go to really sink their roots into the soil. And then out on top of the water, they just have this beautiful 
flower that um, is very delicate and herbaceous smelling and slightly sweet. It's also a little bit um, sweet and green. Um, and I think that sweet green watery floral smell mixes beautifully with this idea of sort of meditation in a forest. So obviously the oud is going to give off a little bit of a woody profile. Um, and, you know, to me, the other thing that's very interesting about this composition is there's real uh, white ambergris tincture used in here. And I know Ensar Oud loves using white ambergris. It's like the, if you've watched some of my Ensar Oud um, reviews, like for example, this is one that I reviewed recently. Um, it's called Ensar Oud's EO number one. I actually have a playlist. So for each one of these brands that I've been doing videos on, I'm creating a playlist. So like there'll be a Centauri playlist. You can go watch all of my Centauri reviews. There's an Aris Ladore playlist with 36 reviews now or 36 videos in there. Um, so each brand sort of has its own little playlist now. And, and there's an Ensar playlist. So if you want to go sort of um, get my thoughts, this is EO number one. This is my favorite Ensar because oh, the, the leather little uh, pouch that it sits in is absolutely brilliant. Um, and this is sort of his take on a castorium leather-like creation. Um, but one thing that I've, I've noticed, if you go watch my NSAR uh, videos, like back to back to back in a playlist, you'll notice many times I talk about this NSAR sparkle. Um, and, and it's what I ended up calling it, actually, the NSAR sparkle, because he uses so much ambergris that it just gives off this this like flash of like imagine the sun sort of hitting the water and catching one of those waves just right and hang you in the eye you know and it's like blinding you because there's this sparkle to his fragrances and there's a little bit of that here because of the ambergris that's used um and and so because of that feel with Ensar's own ouds and also the ambergris the white ambergris that's being used um it feels like this easily could be a collab with Ensar Oud, even though it's not a collab. Uh, Peter Carter created this composition on his own. The only thing Ensar supplied was the Oud itself. But, um, you know, I could totally see this being a collab. Um, and, and so one thing about Shambao and the way that Peter sort of put the composition together is this is another reason why I think it really smells like an Ensar is... Uh, there's many of Ensar's fragrances, which when you smell them, you're not going to get just this big, fermented, old-school, dirty, uh, Indian oud, right? Uh, in fact, he actually said uh, many of his teachers, if you will, who taught him how to distill oud, they didn't like that animalic fermented note. They actually preferred the cleaner notes, and so many of Ensar's ouds don't have the same sort of animalic punch that you'll find like from an Aris La Dore, right? And this collection, the History of Oud collection, really focuses on Oud as a note itself, but also many of Russian Adam's creations outside of it, you know, War and Peace or, you know, I mean, something like uh, Santal Galore, right? They have this, this uh, dirty animalic uh, Oud note. And with Ensars, a lot of times you won't find that. You won't find the dirty animalic oud note um, as much. And so because Sham Shambo um, is a, um, you know, fragrance is a fragrance composition that uses these other types of oud where they each have a little bit of a different scent profile. You know, like I said, the honeyed aspect of the Borneo oud or the light sort of fruity floral aspect of oud Yusuf or the petrichor-like aspect of the Maroki Oud used, you know, it sort of, um, it really does add to that mystique that it feels like a little bit like an Ensar because it doesn't have that, you know, big dirty punch uh, of Oud that I think maybe some people were expecting when they bought this fragrance. So the Ouds here, obviously they give off a little bit of the woody profile that you would expect from an Oud. They also give off a little bit of a rubbery profile. And whenever I'm done sort of giving my two cents on the fragrance, I'm going to tell you the Oud fragrance that it reminds me of. Every single time I've sprayed Chambeau, I get a little bit of a memory of this Oud fragrance. Um, and so the Oud has a little bit of that woody rubberiness, but it sort of stays underneath, if you will. It stays in the background. Um, and, and that's why I said it's sort of an oud and fragrance because um, 
as a perfume, you can sort of smell everything in the composition. Um, you know, imagine this man sitting in the forest meditating, right? And just imagine that, um, that it's not just the oud that you're smelling, it's also the soil that he's sitting on. It's the dirt that he's got his legs crossed on, right? Um, it is the green leaves on the trees that are dotted around him. It's the forest around him, this sort of, um, you know, sights and smells of the forest. And he's got his eyes closed and he's listening to the birds chirp and he's sort of in inhaling the fresh air in the forest. You know how some forests have a very specific smell? Like imagine a pine forest, right? Beautiful smell. Or, um, you know, some of the more herbal uh, trees, this medicinal quality trees like cypress. I mentioned it in my Italian cypress review that I did very recently. Um, and then imagine sort of the sweat on his brow because maybe it's a little bit hot outside. And imagine that sweat falling down and coming down his face to the point where he can almost smell his own sweat, right? And it has this sort of uh, musty, sweaty, salty-like feel. The ambergris even does a good job sort of representing that um, that sort of sweat as he's sitting in the forest meditating with the sun beating down on him. And, um, you know, the and, and then, of course, the star of the floral heart is that lotus, which literally just sort of um, explodes and, and really represents uh, this um, open heart, if you will. Um, and, and so it's really an enjoyable fragrance. I've enjoyed wearing it and smelling it. One thing that I will mention is that even though this isn't just like, um, taking Ensar's Oud oils and just like smelling them on their own, right? Um, or sniffing them on their own. Peter Carter really truly built a, a pretty brilliant composition around these Oud oils. And so many of Peter's creations, one thing that you'll notice for me anyways, and, and I've done a couple videos on his creation. I did one on Mirabai, and Mirabai sort of had the same, even though it was a sandalwood focused composition, it had the same um, texture and feeling to the fragrance because Peter's uh, work has a very specific DNA to it. It really feels like there's this weight to his fragrances. There's this density, there's this heft. Um, and, you know, it, um, it may not be exactly what the person who was searching for that funky animalic fermented oud note is looking for as far as the smell goes but if you're somebody who likes these sort of uh, naturally heavy or dense fragrances there's also some addition of uh, patchouli in here this very dark deep green patchouli which adds to the and there's oak moss which adds to the foresty type feel right oh and there's fir balsam i forgot to mention so um yeah, I mean, imagine sort of this dense patchouli adding this uh, feeling of thick mass is really like um, I showed the cap earlier, right, of, of his of his fragrance, which the bottle, I love his bottle, by the way. I think it's a really unique, you can sort of see the, um, you can sort of see the lines and the edges and the cuts, and he designed this bottle. It's a great looking bottle, but just, I don't know if you can tell, but just how heavy this cap is, this sort of mass. You know, it's got this density, this thickness to it. And that's how his fragrances feel. That's how they come across a lot of times. It's heavy and dense and, and um, volu voluminous, uh, full of volume, right? Um, and so the lotus flower sort of takes that heavy mass that I was talking about um, and it contrasts it with that, um, you know, fruity, floral, watery, like, um, floral note. So there's, there's contrast in the fragrance. There's dichotomy in the fragrance. It's a very interesting story. And if you like the ouds, you can definitely smell them in there. And it's a very long lasting fragrance. Um, but what it will not do is it's not going to blow you away if you're looking for animalic ouds. If you're looking for, um, you know, this funky animalic Chinese earthy mushroomy type oud, or if you're looking for the dirty fecal fermented Indian oud, this is not going to, um, you know, this is not, even if you like the smoky Cambodian oud, or this is not going to do it for you because this really focuses on some ouds that go in a different direction. And for what it is, it's a beautiful composition, although it's not my favorite 
oud fragrance because not my favorite type of oud fragrances because I do like my oud fragrances to be smoky and dirty and animalic and fermented and challenging and all I love all that stuff and in fact though for some reason just the way it's created um there's one oud fragrance that came to mind every single time I've worn it like I said I've worn it to bed three times and there's one fragrance that comes to mind and I wore this um, three days in a row. I almost never do that, but I love this fragrance so much. I wore it three days in a row within the last few months, actually. I think it was three or, I think it was like three months ago or so, two or three months ago, um, whenever I had to go to Austin, Texas. And I brought this with me and I actually wore this to a very important client meeting. I loved it so much. Um, I was like, screw it. I'm wearing it to the client meeting. This is Towers La Oud. And, uh, I have to say thank you to, um, Jeff. My good friend Jeff sent me this, um, and you can see I put a pretty damn good dent. I don't know if you can see the juice level, but um, I put a, for three wearings, I put a damn good dent in this. I was really spraying away, and I don't know exactly why it reminds me of, of Towers Oud. Towers Oud actually uses um, Laotian Oud, okay, so it uses Laotian Oud, but there's just something about it. There is Rose Absolute, there is Ambergris. There is patchouli, there is jasmine, um, so there are some similarities between, um, you know, Chambo and, and Towers Oud, but for me, I actually prefer Towers Oud over Chambo, and the reason I prefer Towers Oud over it is because the, the direction that Andy Tower took is he added more castorium, more cypriol, which adds a little bit of that earthiness. The cypriol might be what sort of uh, recreating that petrichor like, um, you know, uh, earthy smell in Chambo as well. I didn't even think about but that, but that very well may be what, what's creating that smell. There's a little bit of Java vetiver in here. I don't think there's any vetiver in, um, Chambo. Um, there's Styrax in here. There's tobacco in here. There's Cystus labdanum in here. But the most important thing to me, um, Tower claims there's Mysore sandalwood in here. I don't know if there is or, or there isn't, but the note that does it for me is castorium. The castorium adds this almost like metallic smokiness to the oud, to the oud fragrance here. And it takes it in that animalic root. So for me, Tower's Oud is like taking Chambo and making it more to my taste, more smoke um, and more animalic because of the castorium that's used here. There's no castorium or real animalic notes used here. So I would say this is the tamer. You know, if you're somebody who wants to focus on the floral side of things. I just got a whiff of it just when my arm went past my face. It's beautiful. It really is a beautiful composition. Um, but it really does focus on sort of the softer elements of oud in a way, if, if you will, if that makes sense. Whereas Towers oud has a similar DNA for some reason, some unknown reason. It just does. Even though the ouds aren't the same, um, I'm sure the oud in here is, is much more expensive to use. That's my guess. This is probably much more expensive to use. Um, I think this was a 30 mil bottle and I think this comes in a 50 mil. Um, and, and so, you know, but for whatever reason, there is this, uh, similarity to my nose when I spray, I like to, you know, look for, um, I like to look for connections. I've actually done a series called fragrance connections. And for me, there is a connection between Shambo and Tower Zood. And thanks to my friend Jeff for sending me this bottle as a gift. Um, I, I would not buy Shambo, even if I could get it at, you know, two, 300 bucks, which I know that's a steal. I probably wouldn't do it just because I enjoy Towers Oud so much. And I want to sort of, uh, wear this. This is a little bit more to my taste. I'd love to have a bottle of Shambo. I think it would be cool since it's just limited edition and there's less than a hundred bottles on earth and all that stuff. And it's a hundred percent natural. I think it's a good composition, but, um, for me, I would probably stick with Towers La Oud, which I am in love with. And I'm going to review this one day as well. So anyways, that's my take on Shambo. Um, that's sort of my high level overview, my fragrance that I would compare it to. If you have experience, if you're one of the lucky ones to have, to have gotten your nose on Shambo, do let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, leave a comment. Leave a comment anyways, even if you've never smelled it. Um, you know, I know these videos are very niche content. You know, there's very few people who uh, get a chance to smell, you know, if you've got a chance to sample it early on when Peter released it and stuff like that, that's great. But this is very niche YouTube content. But I really think that um, somebody should be doing these type of videos. And 
I'm not really doing it for the views or the ad revenue or anything. I don't care about any of that. But I do think it's cool to have a, a fragrance channel where it's almost like a little bit of a library. People can go see what reviews you've done, you know, pull up Roja Parfum, see what reviews I've done, pull up Guerlain, see what reviews I've done, so forth and so on. But it takes time to build that library out. And that's exactly, you know, what we're doing here, just sort of one video at a time. Um, so I, I really do appreciate everyone watching, commenting, the support. It's been amazing. Uh, leave a comment. Love seeing your faces in the comments. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.